Have you ever watched the professional Crokinole on the Crokinole Center YouTube channel? If not, do yourself a favor and check it out. And if you do, I'd like to apologize in advance for the hours that are likely to disappear as you tumble down the Crokinole rabbit hole. And if you have spent time watching some of that professional Crokinole, you may have found yourself wondering, why would a player intentionally knock their own disc off the board? I thought the idea was to keep yours on and knock the opponents off. Those are great questions and what you are talking about is called the peel. What we're going to do in this video is take a look at why players do that and when you should make the peel and when you shouldn't. And if you stick around till the very end, I'm going to cover something that is very simple to do but it is also something we would call a more advanced strategy that could very well help you win a game. Not only that, I'm also going to tell you how to counteract that strategy if someone tries to use it against you. Here we go. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards, and you know the drill. Give us a like, a comment, a share, a subscribe if you find this fun and helpful. When you watch the pros play, from time to time you will see them utilize the peel. Walsh sliding to the right to take this, and he gets a really strong roll out there. Conrad peels. Sometimes you will see a player do the double peel where they take out the opponent's button and their shooter as well as one of their own buttons that was already on the board. It's a chance for defense here for Slater. It's a really good double peel from Tracy. If you take a look at the objectives of the great game of Crokinole, you'll see that the basic idea is that you want to knock your opponent's buttons off the board or at least out into lower scoring ranges while simultaneously getting yours into the higher scoring ranges, ideally right into the 20 hole. And you definitely do not have the objective of knocking your button all the way into the gutter. While this is true, as the skill level gets higher and higher and higher, there are little nuances within the strategy. One of the best testimonials that I've ever heard about the game of Crokinole is that it is super easy to get started and super tough to master. The barrier of entry is quite low and then there are so many levels of skill as you work your way up. The main reason you would choose to utilize the peel is if and when you want to force play back to the middle of the board. As you know, with the rules of Crokinole, for it to be a valid shot, if you don't have any buttons on the board anywhere in the playing surface, then your opponent must play to the middle, meaning that after they shoot, either their shooter or one that they've come in contact with must end up within or at the very least touching that 15 line. There are a few situations that will set up on the Crokinole board which will mean that you want to consider the peel. We're going to dig into each one of those and then I'm going to share questions that you can ask yourself to help you make that decision of should I peel or should I not. Let's dig in. Situation number one is when your opponent has more 20s than you do and play is somewhere outside of the middle. It's out in the 5 or the 10, somewhere in that area. This is a case where you may want to consider doing the peel. So the thing is, if you and I are playing and there's a disc out here in the 5 or the 10, consider this. If we just trade takeout shots, I take out your button, you take out my button, I take out your button, you take out my button, and that's how the round plays out, unless somebody makes a disastrous mistake and completely blunders a shot, the person who is leading in 20s in that situation is going to win. So, the questions you'll want to ask yourself. One is, is it possible for you to win on the board? So let's say your opponent has 320s, you've only got 220s. Is there any situation that you can foresee setting up on the board where you end up with at least 25 more points than your opponent does on the board to more than overtake that 20 advantage that they have? If you look at the situation and your answer to that question is no, you're not going to be able to win on the board, then the next question you need to ask yourself is, is there a way within your next couple of shots that you are going to be able to work the situation, slowly pull play back toward you enough that you are able to get an angle in 20? Remember we just looked at the ricochet 20? Pull that play back far enough that you're able to get that angle in 20. If you don't think either one of those things is possible, I highly recommend that you peel and again, force play back to the middle. Situation number two is if you and your opponent are even in the 20 count, you have the same number of 20s, 
play is on the outside and your opponent has the hammer. And when I say that your opponent has the hammer, what I mean is they have last shot. The player with the last shot is considered to have hammer and it's quite an advantage, especially in this situation. Again, if we were to go back and forth trading takeouts, the person with the hammer with the last shot is going to win. Unless, of course, somebody makes a disastrous shot. So the questions you can ask yourself in this situation, one, am I going to win on the board? If you have hammer, you're going to win on the board, but if your opponent has hammer, you're not unless something changes. So question number two, can you again, work play back toward yourself to the point that you can do one of two things. You can either accomplish a ricochet, work play back into the middle, or are you able to Catch an angle in such a way that you're able to hide somewhere behind your discs. Set your opponent up to make a mistake. Force an error out of them, which will then give the advantage back to you. If you don't think either one of those things can happen within the next couple of shots, I would encourage you to peel force them to play back to the middle. The third situation we'll look at is when it sets up in such a way that you are winning the 20s race. You have more 20s than your opponent. So for all intents and purposes, you are in control and you are set to win this round but play ends up on their side of the board. Your opponent happens to be a wily adversary who is very skilled at hiding buttons either behind the pegs on their side or way over, so you either need to shoot Hogan's Alley or across that center hole that's very tough to do. And in this situation... You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? I don't believe in luck, so a better question to ask yourself may be, how confident do you feel at picking those tough shots off on the far side of the board? That question combined with how likely and how skilled is your opponent at hiding discs over there? There are some players that are fantastic at it, and they will force you to make tough shots through the pegs over and over and over again until finally you miss. So if that's the situation, your best option may be to again, peel everything off the board and force play back to the middle rather than have to repeatedly make those tough Hogan's Alley shots. Now I can already hear you yelling at your screen, but you're giving them an open 20. Yes, you will. And they may very well drain an open 20, meaning that you're in an even deeper hole. But there are times that that is absolutely the lesser of two evils. Now let's dig into your bonus tip. Honestly, once people have been playing for a while in tournaments and in competitive situations, they usually get a pretty good handle on all the scenarios that we've covered so far. But this next tip we're gonna dig into, I really only see it with the top tier of players. So here's the situation. Let's say you and I are playing, we're even in 20 count, and you have a button somewhere on your side of the board. I've got one shot left, and then you have the final hammer shot. What a lot of players will do is they'll just hit and stick. They'll just hit that button, their button will sit there, their opponent knocks the disc off, they win the round. But instead, if you again opt for that peel, yes, you've given them an open board. All they have to do is make a valid shot in order to, they don't even need a 20, they just need a valid shot in order to win the round. But I will guarantee you there is a much higher possibility that someone could blunder an open shot and not even reach the house or shoot out the other side that is way more likely than them missing an opponent's disc that's sitting right in front of them. I still remember the very first time I saw a former world champion blow an open 20 right out the other side. I went, oh! He does it too, <laughs> and I felt so much better. But that is a strategy that you can use in that situation. They're just more likely to miss that shot. So because you're a good person, you're gonna share this tip with your friends, and eventually somebody's going to use this strategy against you, so here you are. Open 20s are easy or getting a valid shot is easy except when you're under extreme pressure and you need to make that shot in order to win the round. If you have any concerns that you're not going to be successful, here is the tip to counteract that strategy I just shared with you. Instead of just lining up like normal to hit that open 20, drop off to one side or the other so that you're still aiming for the 20 hole, but line it up in such a way that if you miss, if you overshoot, you're going to catch a peg on the far side. You've eliminated the possibility, pretty much, of blowing a disc out the far side. Then you can shoot a little bit stronger to reduce the chances that you're going to come up short. There you have it. Now the question of to peel or not to peel is up to you. 
have fun peeling the greatest game on earth. As well as an addition. A real man makes his own luck. Billy Zane, Titanic. Hmm. A real man makes his own luck. Rollin', rollin', rollin'.